Assalamualaikum and good day everybody. So uh, today uh, I record this video for our next topic, chapter uh, 3 or topic number 3, Introduction to Working Capital Management. But in your textbook, it will be chapter 4. Yeah? Okay, now let's go to our main uh, lesson for this topic. Now, these are the learning objectives for this chapter. Uh, so I differentiate into three different parts. So part one will be the introduction to working capital management where I will discuss the terminology under working capital. And then uh, we will look at the risk return set off, complete information on the risk return set off. Next, the second part will be, uh, we will discuss the strategies in managing the working capital. So basically there are three uh, strategies which are hedging principle, uh, aggressive principle and conservative. Then lastly, I will uh, close our le lesson for this topic with cash conversion cycle. Okay, now without further ado, let's proceed with the first topic. Okay class, now let's look at the terminology of working capital. So managing the firm's uh, working capital that is its current asset and current liabilities is one of the financial uh, manager's main functions as uh, working capital represents a significant proportion of the total assets. So now let's look at the two components under working capital. First, current assets. So we know that current assets comprise mainly uh, from the inventory, account receivable, uh, marketable securities and as well as cash while uh, current liabilities comprise mainly accounts payables, accruals, creditors, uh, creditors for expenses as well as bank of the trial. So working capital or often referred to as net current assets is usually defined as the current asset minus your current liabilities. So for a firm to be liquid or solvent, it is imperative that net current assets are positive. So working capital basically is a difference between your current asset and your current liabilities. Okay. So the target for every organization is to have a positive working capital or positive net current, current asset. Now, let's discuss on the risk return set off uh, in working capital management. The risk return set off in managing the firm's working capital is related to the set off between the firm's uh, liquidity and profitability level. By having greater current asset as compared to the non-current asset might increase the liquidity level of the organization but it will decrease the profitability level. And from the liquidity aspect, by having a greater current liability as compared to the long-term financing will decrease the liquidity level of the business but will increase the profitability level. A firm can uh, increase its investment in working capital by increasing its investment in current asset. This will later on increase the firm's liquidity. For example, an increase in inventory or increase in cash uh, will make the firm more liquid as they might less likely to face a stock out and be able to pay their bills on time. However, this may not result in an increase in the firm's return if the profits remain unchanged. Therefore, the financial manager has to determine a balance between liquidity and profitability that will contribute positively to the firm's value. The use of current versus long-term funds also involves a risk with a trade-off. The greater the use of long-term funds, the lower the risk of insolvency and the lower the return. But the greater the use of short-term funds or short-term financing, the higher the risk of insolvency and the higher the return. The use of current liabilities to finance the firm's asset might provide flexibility to organization as the maturity period for such fund is shorter. Also, the cost of short-term funding is lower than for long-term funding. However, the use of current liabilities result in a higher risk of insolvency and a greater uncertainty in the cost of funding due to the fluctuation of the interest rates. Therefore, the financial manager in considering the risk with the turn-off should only take on additional risk 
why, when an initial return is expected. So we can now see that the risk return trade-off involves an increased risk of insolvency versus increased profitability. So, if uh, we ask ourselves what would be the effects of increasing the firm's net current asset with no changes in its current liabilities? So the effect will be the liquidity will increase but it will reduce the profitability. And what will be the effects of reducing the firm's net current asset by using more short-term financing and less long-term financing? The answer will be the profitability of the business will increase as short-term funds have lower rates of interest than long-term finance over a short-term time period. However, a firm's risk of insolvency is increased as short-term funds have to be repaid earlier and more frequently than long-term funds. Okay class, now let's look at the classification of assets. From the perspective of applying the working capital policy, assets can be divided into permanent asset and temporary asset. Now let's look at the definition of both type of assets. First, permanent asset. Permanent assets are investment in assets which are expected to be held uh, for more than a year. It can be subdivided into permanent current asset and the non-current asset. Now, what do you mean by permanent current asset? In practice, even though the amount of current asset fluctuates over the year, they rarely drop to zero, which leads to an idea of permanent current asset. That is, current asset on hand at its lowest level in a year. Examples of permanent current asset would include the firm's minimum cash or bank balance and the minimum level of inventory that we know as safety stock or buffer stocks, which are maintained by the firm over the year. Non-current asset whereby uh, all the assets of firms will automatically fall into the category of permanent assets. And last one will be the temporary assets. These assets are current assets that will be liquidated and be placed within the current year. Therefore, some of the firm's current assets are temporary whereas the rest are permanent. Now, let's look at the classification of sources of financing. In determining the sources of financing, these sources can be divided into permanent sources, temporary sources, and spontaneous sources. Permanent sources of financing are financing with maturity periods of more than a year. These include medium term loan, common stock, preferred stock, and non current liability. Temporary sources are short term financing comprising the current liabilities. This consists of short term notes payable, which includes unsecured bank loans, commercial paper, and loans secured by account receivable and inventories. Lastly, will be spontaneous financing. Spontaneous sources of financing consist of trade credit and other accounts payable that arise spontaneously in the firm's day-to-day -day operations. Other accounts payable will include wages and salaries payable, accrued interest, and accrued taxes. Okay class, now we are in the strategies in capital management. So there are various working capital policies that a firm may pursue. Uh, the policy chosen will be that which best suits the firm at that particular point of time. So theoretically, we have three strategies, namely hedging principle, conservative approach, and aggressive approach. Hedging principle. So the hedging principle or self liquidity approach is a moderate policy that matches asset and liabilities to maturities. So it means that you try to balance off the assets and the source of financing. Normally, the permanent assets are financed by the permanent sources, while temporary assets are financed by the temporary sources. So, in other words, the temporary financing includes spontaneous sources, finances only temporary current assets, whereas permanent and temp spontaneous uh, financing will finance the permanent current asset and the non current asset. An example will be where an asset, for example, equipment, that is expected to provide uh, cash flows over 5 years 
should be financed by let us say a 5 year non guarantee liability so another example is if a firm needs additional inventories for a period of 3 months so it should then use a 3 month credit to finance it you can refer to figure 4.1 that shows the uh, breakdown in terms of the non current asset permanent current asset and the other temporary current assets and how they have been financed by the short term and spontaneous financing as well as the non liability and the equity so you can see that in figure 4.1 where the total of the permanent current asset and the non current asset are totally financed by the non liability plus the equity plus the spontaneous source of financing whereby the temporary current asset as you can see in the uh, wavy graph that are financed by total of short term and spontaneous sources of financing now let's look at the conservative approach conservative approach means the firm prefers to have more cash on hand especially in hard times under this approach the firm uses permanent sources including spontaneous to finance all the permanent asset both current and non-current and some of the temporary assets temporary sources whereby including spontaneous are used to finance some of the temporary asset so this is a very safe working capital financing policy however the permanent sources are more expensive Hence, this approach will lead to a lower risk, lower return. You can refer to figure 4.2 page of page 113. You can see that some of the temporary current assets are financed by the short term and the spontaneous sources of financing. Whereby, total of non-current asset, permanent current asset and some of the temporary current asset of the firm are financed by the total of non-current liability plus equity plus the spontaneous sources of financing so you can say that this approach is a risk averse approach now let's look at the aggressive approach under this approach firm wish, wishes to take higher risk the firm finance all of its temporary assets and some of its permanent current asset and non current assets with short-term financing which includes the spontaneous sources of financing the other permanent current asset and non-current assets are financed by permanent sources which also include spontaneous sources here the firm is going for higher returns at the risk of possible liquidity problems this approach could lead the firm to a dangerous position of rising interest rates as well as loan renewal problems However, short-term debt is cheaper than non current liability. Hence, this approach will lead to higher risk and higher return. Or, you can name it as a risk takers approach. Let's refer to figure 4.3 at the same page. We can see that the non current asset and some of its permanent current assets are financed by non current liability plus equity plus spontaneous sources of financing. Whereby, the firm's temporary current assets and some of its permanent current assets are financed by its short terms and spontaneous sources of financing. Okay, now for further understanding, let's look at one example. Prefer to example 1, page 114. As you can see, you have a table that shows you the value of the assets and equity as well as the liabilities for Yodo Sunan Bahad. So what you can see here from this table it shows that the all non-current asset valued at 150,000 and some of the business current asset at 250,000 are financed by the business equity and non-current liability in total of 1.2 million. Next some of its current asset, which is half of it, valued at 250,000, are financed by its current liabilities with the same value. This shows that this business or this firm is liquid, 
therefore it is applying a conservative approach where all the permanent current asset are financed by its long-term financing whereby its temporary current asset are financed by its short-term financing now let's look at example 2 so the tables here shows that the value of assets at 120 million which consists of non-current asset with 100 million in value and current asset with 20 million and what you can see here the value of equity is 55 million non-current liability 40 million and the balance 25 million which consists of its current liability so from this table we can see that its non-current asset valued at 100 million ringgit are financed by a total of its total equity 55 million plus its non-current liability 40 million and sum of its current liability 5 million in order to cover all its non-current asset and the entire current asset valued at 20 million are financed by the balance of its current liability which is 20 million so it shows that the business needs to use its long-term financing or permanent source financing and spontaneous financing plus the short-term financing some of the short-term financing to finance its asset so therefore this company might be profitable profitable but have liquidity problem and they are applying the aggressive approach okay class now let's proceed to cash conversion cycle cash conversion cycle is the length of time from the beginning of the production process to the point when cash is collected from sale of finished products less the average payment period we can see from the equation below where ccc is equals to icp or inventory conversion period plus receivable collection periods less payables deferred period icp can be said as the average length of time required to convert material into finished good and send sell to them so the formula for icp as you can see in page 115 in your textbook is equivalent to inventory divided by sales per day or if you don't have the value of your sales we can substitute this with your cost of sales amount for example inventory divided by cost of sales per day so this is the formula of your icp next let's look at rcp so rcp is the length average length of time required to convert the firm's receivables into cash so the formula for rcp will be your receivables your total receivables divide with your credit sales per day and next your payables deferred period or PDP so PDP is the average length of time between the purchase of materials and labor and the payment of cash to them so the formula will be your total payables divided by your cost of sales per day now let's refer to example 3 at page 116 in your textbook let's read Komodo industry a manufacturer of electronic equipment has annual sales of 10 million ringgit the cost of goods sold is 70 percent of sales The average inventory is 1.25 million ringgit. Average receivable is 1.11 million ringgit. 
and the average payable is 0.5 million ringgit. So are you are required to calculate the CCC for Commodore industry. Now let's calculate the CCC. So you know that CCC is equivalent to ICP plus RCP minus PDP. First of all, let's calculate your ICP. So ICP is equivalent to your inventory divided by cost of sales per day. So the value of your inventory is 1.25 million divided with the cost of sales of your business. So you can see that the cost of goods sold of the business is 70% of the sales. So you need to calculate the 70% out of your sales which was 10 million and divide with 360. So supposedly you will get 64 days. Next, calculate your RCP. So RCP can be calculated by take your receivables which was 1.11 million divide with your average sales per day or credit sales per day so here you don't have credit sales but we can assume the total annual sales as your credit sales so you will use 10 million divide by 360 so supposedly you will get 40 days next your PDP PDP is equivalent to your payables which is 0.5 million divide with your cost of sales per day so it will be 70% out of your total sales divide by 360 so supposedly you will get 26 days so now we can calculate your CCC so CCC is equivalent to 64 plus 40 minus 26 therefore the cash conversion cycle is 78 days okay so the shorter the CCC the more profitable it is for the firm as this will mean that the length of time between paying for materials and labor and collection of receivables is shorter. By having shorter CCC, it shows that the business have a very uh, liquid asset as compared to the, any firm that have longer CCC means that they were unable to convert their products into cash in a very short time period. So, how can a firm reduce its cash conversion cycle? There are plenty of ways that can be done. First of all, a firm can manage its inventory efficiently by increasing its inventory without causing any stock out, which result in loss of sales. So this will reduce the inventory conversion period. Next, by improve its debt collection procedure. Debt collection, collection procedure can be improved so as to collect cash outstanding faster but without pressuring the customer so that sales will not be lost. So this will reduce the receivables collection period. Thirdly, by settling the accounts payable in the slowest possible way without damaging the firm's credit rating. This strategy will be able to lengthen the payables default period. Next by improve the cash flow management. Tracking the timing and amount of cash inflow and outflow is an important part of the cash flow management. Lastly, by improve the accounts receivable process. Alright everyone, so that's all for our lecture for this topic. Hope you can understand. You need to further read in your textbook for further understanding. So see, till then, see you again in the next 
topic and chapter. Assalamualaikum.